You know, I was thinking, I usually like to bring something to kind of help illustrate what I'm going to talk about. And so, um, <laughs> so as I was thinking, don't touch me, don't ever touch me. <laughs> I'm going to go over that way again one more time, Colin, please. If I sneak up on it. David, we talked about this. Please. And you say, well, and I, and I like what Brent, when the way he preaches, he'll go on a, he'll go on a bit of a, a, you can get help if you want. Point to anybody, they'll help you. It's just a wonderful place. Um, your daughter? Your daughter since split. She dumped you like a hot spud. So, is anybody going to help this guy out? There's, here's. See, you need an engineer here. <laughs> Bruce is an engineer. He's, like, he's got like the real ring and everything. You can spot them. You look carefully. Dean's got one too. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I warned you, David. So anyways, I, I like what Brent says. When he's preaching, he'll be talking along, boom, bada, boom. He's, and he's, I like what he says. He says, you're probably wondering why I'm, I'm, I'm talking like this, what I'm, what I'm, why I'm telling you this story. And I think, yeah, why? And he brings it all in. So the reason, I, this is just me. Yeah, there's one end missing. I, but it's all, gonna, it's all gonna work, Dave. You just kinda, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't make it any worse. It's just kinda. Okay, I got it on sale, all right? Okay, I just can't help that. So, so anyways, David, you're doing a wonderful job. And uh, Father will be pleased. And is. <laughs> Anyways, so, so, so the reason I do that, and I, and I hope it doesn't offend. I, hope, I really hope it doesn't offend. For me, it's just like this, you know, uh, there's, there's one thing to hear a sermon, and there's one thing to see a sermon. Like a few weeks ago, I broke a Rolex watch. Should have been here. Now I knew there was a, I knew, I thought maybe it wasn't an original Rolex because it said on there, R-O-L-L hyphen X. It, it could have been real, it was $7.95. You know, for that kind of money, I thought it might be, but. Oh no, 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 no just undo it. Hey, David, just, you're just going over the top, buddy. You're just doing great. <laughs> See, thank you. Thank you, David. You're, you're a wonderful man, but I, I work alone, okay, so. It's all done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, come on. Hey. And so for me, when you, and, and people, you know, even last week, they were kind of still talking about the watch that I busted. Now I asked, I said, wasn't that a sermon? I don't know about that, but you broke the watch. So I just pray that with this morning's illustration that it, you just kind of, it kind of helps things stick. Is that okay? It's, you know, <laughs> I think too, you know, just, just give yourself some, think about this. I wonder what Johnny's toy box was like. He's got the weirdest, the weirdest stuff. <laughs> A knife. Yes. It's only going to get better. Oh, I forgot to put my ball. That's okay. We're going to be okay. So anyways. Um, I don't know. You can maybe have a look-see. Have a look-see. Missing one little piece. But that's all right. Now, what I'm going to do, usually you tell people what you're doing. Um, it's most likely in the pastor's office, my keys. Usually you tell people what you're doing. But I'm, we're going to have fun this morning. And I heard you, you know, you say that, Christopher. We're going to have a little bit of fun this morning, party time. And, and how many know, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to be in the house of the Lord. I understand there's times when we need to be serious. I under, understand when there's times we need to press in, right? You know all that stuff. But, but, but there's also time when, you, you know, laughter, I, I love that scripture. Laughter is as a good 
medicine. So take your medicine. I'm just being prompted right now. I'm just being prompted right now. There are people that are sitting here that they just need your support. I'm just being prompted. It, it, it's, it's been a tough week for some folks. This is not to make anybody feel bad. It just says that we as a family, we care about what's happened for you, maybe even to you. And what I would like, and we're not going to have anybody, you know, um, quiz anybody, but uh, think about your week, and if this is a week where you think, wow, I, I, I certainly could use a touch from God, I want you to just pop up where you are. They did it in Azusa, right? 60,000 people I just heard. Has anybody had a rough week? Is that you? Did you want to stand up? No? It's been delightful. One, there's the brave ones. Come on, anybody else? Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. We have not because we ask not. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. So, Father, let's, uh, let's just, those people that are around them, take a look around who's standing up. These are the brave ones. The, a lot of us are lying right now. That's okay. I don't want to look like, a, like I don't have a handle on this thing called life. Come on. Amazing worship, too. Okay, so let's gather around about them. Come on, we outnumber them, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten to one. Gather around them. And just begin to pray for them. And so, Father, I do just that as well. I just thank you, Father God, for these brave souls that dared to stand up. And, I, and, a, and a, a saying that comes to me, you, you are not healed because you do not reveal. Flip that around so as you reveal, Father can heal. And so in Jesus' name, we just release that healing touch, the balm of Gilead. Even now, even now, Father God, that you would come and, Father, like Humpty Dumpty, you would put those pieces back together again as only you can. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for those dear ones that were able to stand up, Father God. And I pray not only for their healing, but Father, you would give them more than enough. You would give them more than enough. I'm talking about overflow here. I'm talking about, whoa, look, so, and filled with joy, Father. They looked like the cat that swallowed the canary. Father, they just be, have that, that joy unspeakable. They're so full. They're so rich. They think, wow, this might have been a really rough week, but you know what? Today's a new day. Father God, you're touching these people in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father God. And there's absolutely nothing that you can't touch. There's absolutely nothing that you can't heal. And so, Father God, we just release that Holy Spirit, even even now, Father God, to do what you do best, to touch, to heal, to restore. And Father God, I just thank you for these dear ones. I even thank you, Father God, for this congregation. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. Wow. 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 So I'm going to build something, and then I'm going to ask you what I'm building. And uh, nothing up my sleeve. What, a chicken coop? Close. It's, it's close. Not a chance. Look at that. It looked like one bar. See what I'm doing? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> my mom would be actually frightened. Okay. So I've got this. Thanks, son. I love you. <laughs> Don't go far, son. I might, might need another hand. All right. I'll just, I'll just be right back there. Can I destroy that? We're going to replace it. Watch your, actually, watch your eye. <laughs> That's my son who loves me. Don't worry about your eye, Dad. We'll get you a patch and a parrot. You'll be fine. Is it hot in here or am I just going through the chain? I don't know what's going on. So anyways, so um, yeah, this should work. Oh, let me go. Let go. Let's go. 
perfect. <laughs> you think it was you I was cutting into. <clears throat> okay. Any ideas yet? Not a clue. <laughs> I just love this. There we go. No, it's not a giant knitting needle. Okay, thank you, Father. Good, good, good. That's about right. Thank you. That's good. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not done yet, Chris. I'm not. You gotta get to the punchline quickly. Some people just bug out on you. Okay. Thank you, Father. Boy, I sure hope this is worth it. I did have a weird toy box when I was a kid. That's just how I planned it. There's more tape. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Great too, I was amazing with tape, you know, but I don't know what's happened since then. Okay, so this is good, right? I bet you a lot of it. I've already got it figured out. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Sorry? What was that? No, this is a new creation. That's like, that's like you guys. You're like a new creation. Right? Now, I might need a hand with this, son. Yeah, this will work. This will work uh, pretty good. I just kind of need to tape it on something like, like maybe this. We'll take the mic off so it doesn't fall. And, uh, and I'll just tape it so like, yeah. I need, I need to like the tape lay out. I like to tape it on. Like, like to tape it on. Oh, like a vertical thing. Like a vertical thing. You want the globe here? Yeah, the globe above. The globe has got to go above. Good. Huh? Right to the bottom, okay. Is that it? Yeah. Incision complete. <laughs> there it is. Oh, hang on. I haven't quite finished it. Whoa. Dean, don't go away. No, that's, that's good. It's good. I just need the bottom. This needs to go on the bottom. And thread all the way through? No, no, just kind of thread like this. I have no idea what he's making. Okay, one more time. Perfect. Hey? Doesn't look good? You know? People leave today and say, I have not a clue. Do you? I have no clue what he spoke about, but man, that was wild what he did. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it, son, thank you. You're amazing. A hand for myself. Can we do that? Oh, wow. David, beautiful job. Okay. When I was a young lad, and the earth was still cooling, This is a knife. Don't mess with me. I grew up around farm country. And what you would see on the tops of barns... Ooh, the light's coming on, sister. And if your house was one of those particularly tall houses, yeah, mock me now, buddy. I'm on a roll. <laughs> you would see two, three, three on a building. Do you have an idea what that is? Lightning rod. Isn't that amazing? I'm surprised you can get it before then. It looks pretty good. If you ask me.
Those are the cheap seats. <laughs> now you know why. <laughs> That's because it's more than anybody could expect. This is handmade for crying out loud. All that to say that, yeah, it's a lightning rod. And I'm surprised you didn't get it before this. It looks pretty good. So, anyways. And so what would happen is, like I did some reading on lightning rods. This is the street stuff. And what the lightning rods would do is if there was a storm close by and there was lightning, they certainly didn't want it to strike their barns nor their homes. Because if it did, what would happen? Is that your shirt? Or did you get that out of the garage sale? Was that really, did you go there? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> exactly. And that's how people would lose property, right? It would go on fire. Because that particular house or garage, if we don't see it next week, we'll know what happened. That particular house or garage, no, bless you guys, was not meant to carry the voltage, the power, right? Really, I'm going somewhere. I'm going to get to God eventually. You know this, right? Please hurry, someone said. And so, I, again, I, I, I looked it up. And in a cloud, I've got it written here. Lightning rods were, orig were originally developed by Benjamin Franklin. I think I'm trying to find out how many, what the volts. Oh man, I'm gonna have to guess, which is so not me. I believe this figure to be correct. There it is. A tall thunderstorm cloud can hold over 100 million volts of potential. Isn't that a lot? You know, you've seen, you've heard about the proverbial golfer, right? They're doing good. I know it looks like rain, but I'm still going to swing. Up comes the metal thing. <laughs> Dust. <laughs> a hole in one. <laughs> we can have a service right here. It's beautiful. Lots of grass. Right? And, and I'm going. Yeah, I'm getting there. Gosh. In the wintertime, have you ever had that you go to read... You go, you go for a light switch, and you drag your feet. <laughs> right? Or if you're a nasty person, not me, of course, but... <laughs> you ever do this? You, and you go, and, you, and somebody's not looking, and you just touch, just come up on the back of the rear. <laughs> their, their ear, their ear. Hey, this is a, this, this is a family deal. Deb. Right? And what happens? There's so much power. Like when you're that when you when you when you walk along the road, you develop voltage, you develop power. And the closer you get to something that will conduct or take it to ground, the better chance it has of leaving you and and, and right? You see, and you've all seen the blue white sparks. Usually in the wintertime, right? When the air is nice and dry. So with this, with 100 million volts, I thought, wow. <laughs> and as I put this, this together, sorry. It's okay, I won't go there again, it's okay. As I put this together, I just had that download of we too are like lightning rods. That we too, if there's a voltage in the area, if there's something in the heavens, if there's power close by, you see where I'm going with this thing? And we put up our antennas, our, our, our lightning rods, and you know what, the, our lightning, just one of the things, some people they just they pray with their hands, but when I, I just saw, the, I saw Winbird Church, I'm sure they do it in other ones, but when our hands go up, oh, the lightnings of God 
come and they go through us. That's what I see. I saw it in worship this morning. I thought, wow, it's happening again. And so as, as me as, a, as, a, as a, uh, a conductor of spiritual power, this thing, right, the way this thing works, I'm sneaking up on that speaker. The way this thing works, this wire, it, it, when, the, when they made these things, was usually made of copper wire, pure copper wire. It had to be pure copper. There couldn't be any, 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 um, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Thank you. Could, any, there couldn't be any impurities in it. And, what, and it had to be big. Why? So it could handle the voltage. So it could handle the power. And when these things failed, it was because it was a poor conductor. There was something wrong. There was a kink in the wire. I don't know, Dan. I was going to phone you and ask you. When you have high voltage and you crimp a wire, does that make any difference? To the, does it slow down at all? It has to go around the corner. <laughs> okay, let's pretend it slows down. <laughs> I pull that one out of the fire. Not. But but for us, as 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 lightning rods, as as people that just purposefully place themselves in the presence of God, where it comes down, we need to be that pure conductor. That pure conductor. I saw a really neat illustration. I watched Azusa Street yesterday. And this guy was carrying a bag. It's from Trader Joe's. I'm an international shopper. But um, uh, the, uh, what happened was, is, is this guy talked about, about leaving our baggage, offloading our baggage. And we can do that. Wasn't supposed to fall over. Leaving our baggage. We, because that, that becomes a conscious thing. And as I become, as Father continues to purify me, to purify you, we become better conductors. You with me so far? And with that charge, with that infilling of the Holy Spirit, that's when it happens. That's why when you see people, and, I, and again, I saw it yesterday, when people are prayed for, what happens? Some people they fall down under the power. What happened there? There was a transfer. Not trying to get too out there, okay? I certainly don't want to offend. I want to be very careful here. But there's a transfer of power. There's something happens. People would ask, well, how come when you're getting prayed for, you, you fall down? My wife heard, I think this somewhere. It's because I can't stand anymore. Pretty simple. The power of God comes on you. And Father, if we allow him, anybody can cut this wire. You've heard about people turning their back on God. How come God's not working in my life? Well, you gotta find out where it's happening, where the storm is. It was happening in Azusa Street yesterday. And they get underneath that and they put themselves out there. They step into the glory. And you can draw, I believe, you can draw heaven down. You can, you can, uh, you just, you are not satisfied with 2% milk. You're not satisfied with cocoa puffs. You're not satisfied with, with, with white bread, even though I like it. But it, it doesn't do it. You want the real thing. And I believe we can pull, we can draw heaven down. Alenda, last week, when she was doing ministry, and worship is a just, worship, what wor wor worship is, it draws heaven down. Does a lot of things. And she saw a purple gray mist. How does that happen? You draw heaven down. And when that comes over you, something happens. Does that make sense? And so that's what I pray. I went to a lot of work to do this thing, and it's an amazing piece of work. I don't know if Brenda will let me keep it there, but, but anyways, that, that we can do that. We can stand. There's something also about numbers. Now, uh, I think they were shooting for 120,000 people. I heard this morning 60,000 showed up. 
at Azusa Street. 110? I'm going to go for 120. I'm just going to say that. And, and uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself because basically I'm thinking in terms of the upper room. Right? They got there. And I think sometimes the Spirit of God, when does that come? When you get to that place and you say, I will not be denied. You get that place. You're not going to move me off. You're not going to discourage me. I don't know how long it's going to take. I just know it's on the way. That might be with healing. That might be with finances. That might be with relationship. That might be, that might be. And when you stay on that place, heaven will pour a blessing on you that you can't even contain. Isn't that amazing? So who's invited to do that? Who's, I think we all are. I found this nifty story. It's good. Thank you, Father. I just give you praise and I give you glory. This is out of Matthew. So I'm saying, thank God he got to the Bible. I just thought it was like a gong show here. Hey, it all fits. Matthew 22. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables. What's a parable? He's telling one story, but it means something else. Where does the revelation come from? Father. So he's telling the story. The story goes like this. The kingdom of heaven. Wow, that's what we want to pull down. That's what we want to access. That's what we want to be a part of. That's what we want to define us. It's like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. Arranged a marriage. And, and this is my interpretation. It, it might not be right, but this is kind of what I pulled out of it. A marriage is an intimate, is it not? Relationship. One of the closest relationships that you could ever have. And so, and so this king is, is putting this feast of, and it's for a marriage. And I, and I think... Because it's, it's like if you chew on a tough piece of meat long enough, eventually the goodness comes out, right? <laughs> and so with this, what it was is, is that, the, the, that Father's calling us to that place, that relationship. That relationship is closer than a brother, that relationship. And when you kind of come into that place, Chris Ballard and Adam Bethley calls it, when you come into that metron, when you come into that uh, atmosphere, if you've ever been in those atmospheres, you're like, oh, there's something going on. I may not understand it, but God is in the house. You've been in that place? That's the kind of relationship that he wants with you. So the story goes. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king Jeez, I think, who would be the king here? Father God? Like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call. I'm just going to camp there for a second. To call. Everyone in this place Every one of you has to do, has nothing to do with whether you feel, how do they do that? It has nothing to do with whether you feel called or not. Because if it, if it, if it did, then you, you can let yourself off the hook. Well, I don't feel called. Too late. Too late. You are called. You are part of what's happening. And one of these things I know with a call, Deb knows this stuff. When you're called, and you are, you see, and, uh, until you step out, there's no reason to equip you. Right? Well, I'm going to sit at home, I'm going to pray for a job. 
Meanwhile, Oprah and I are going to fellowship. <laughs> Don't understand, man. There's no, I can't understand. Nothing happened. You got to get off your couch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right? Someone said, off your blessed assurance. You got to get up. You got to step into this thing. This is a partnership. He doesn't do it to you. He does it for you, with you. We have a role. To, you have a role to play. I have a role to play. And once I step out, then it comes. I had a picture once of that whole thing. What's that look like? And I saw the person walking on steps, but the next step wasn't there until I did this. Just as I put my foot, there it is. And so it is with you. As you step out, when you step out, that's when it happens. Is that okay? That's called faith. I don't see it, Father, but I'm, I know there are no surprises that come across your desk. Isn't that cool? Like, oh man, I didn't figure this. And this I, wow, I didn't see that one coming. He's got you covered. He's got it figured out. But there's no reason to give you the faith. No reason to give you the supernatural if you're going to not step into it. I don't want to be cruel here. But if that's true, let's flip that around. So in other words, if I really step out, things are going to happen. Now you're getting it. Then it comes. The, the miraculous happens when you step out. When you dare to pray. And depending on the atmosphere, and we saw that yesterday on the Azuzu uh, feed, if the air is, can I use the word, if it's pregnant enough, if it's charged enough, that mir the miracles will break out anyway. Isn't that true? You just got to step into the zone. <sighs> I don't get it. I don't have to understand it. That's your job, Father God, but I'm here. I'm available. And my little lightning rods go up. Bam! So you've been all called. Too late. You're in the building. Dave, lock the back door. No, you won't. So, okay, so the call goes out. And he sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And, and what I get from that is they, uh, they already had an, uh, a standing invitation. You have a standing invitation. And when you really think about it, you think, I think everybody's got a standing invitation. Isn't that right? All you have to do is cash it in. They have to do a step out. So they had their invitations, and they were invited to the wedding. And they were, this is breaks your heart, and they were not willing to come. I'm too busy. Don't you know this is football Sunday? Don't you know that I gotta floss my cat's teeth? Don't you know whatever, right? And you know, you folks are amazing. Nobody paid you to come. In fact, they even took up an offering. Isn't that amazing? And here you are. It's because we're hungry. It's because we want to be under that place where the Holy Spirit just downloads and, you, and, and on all the voltage, all the power that I think I can handle, Father God, give that to me and then just a little bit more. That's why we're here. That's what changes things. So when we go back out that door, right, you are equipped, you are matched to the hour. You and Father, loneliest place to be in the world is without your Heavenly Father. Right? But the Word says He promised never to leave you. Oh, isn't that great? Never to leave you. He's not going to, when the going gets tough, he's there. Or that uh, saw on a bumper sticker. It wasn't quite that way. When the going gets tough, the tough go shopping. I don't think that's father. <laughs> he's going to stick with you closer than a brother. 
And I sometimes wonder when things come, and I know it was in the area of finance when Father's just testing me in these things, but I just have that feeling that when you get into that pickle, that thing you didn't see coming, that, uh, that surgery this morning, whatever it is, when you call on the name of God, when you call on the name of Jesus, that's when it comes. And that is yours because it's been all been paid for and bought before you ever drew your first breath. Isn't that amazing? I just love it. Somebody picked up the check, some would say. Isn't that amazing? I hear it. <laughs> I'm a desperate man. Thank you, Father. Drive really fast. Oh no, it's already done, eh? Okay, so. Anyways, okay, so 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 the first bunch they jam out. I'm not interested, I'm too busy, I've got things to do. I I don't feel the call. I just I just don't feel it. How many of us know that sometimes there's things that we have to do that we don't feel like doing? I spent some time in a dentist chair this week. Oh, gosh. Most I need prayer for that. Didn't feel like doing it. And what do those guys ask you, right? Have you been flossing regularly? Is biannually regular? I don't, I, I don't know. You can't lie. He's got this iron hook in his hand. You're like a... Fish, it's fading fast out in his chair, flopped out. He's got you, one foot on the pedal, another one on the drill. I think, oh, forgive him, Father, for he knows not what he does. Oh, uh, I didn't floss every day. No, Johnny, you haven't. You've missed a few. Hey, Doc, don't push it, you know. Anyways, I don't even know where I was going with that, but it was a fun story because you weren't in that chair, right? Okay, so, okay. So the first bunch are busy. Oh, my goodness. And again, I just, wow, wow. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see? Now he's going, now he, father is petitioning. Is that, uh, that's like kind of how I, I, I'm just kind of pulling that over. See, I'm prepared, I've prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed. Too late to bring those back, right? Are killed. And all things are ready. Come to the wedding. I think sometimes the Father will tap us on the shoulder more than once. Right? Some of us, okay, I'm a slow learner. There, I said it. You can edit the tape after, okay, Colin. But Father will pursue you. All he needs you to look and say, yes, Lord. It's just that simple. People think this whole thing is really complicated. Look how thick the book is. How do you get, the, right? It's not. I'm not making less of this. Please hear me on that. But it's really quite simple for people like me and maybe some of you. Thank you. (laughs) I just, I don't know what that thing is, but I need one. You score a home run, sucker. That thing is going to go off. Hot dog. So he's called them a second time. But they made light of it and went their way. One to his own farm, and another to his business. This is verse 5, chapter 22, verse 5. In other words, I've got things that maybe even the world will see as legitimate distractions. Maybe you're one of those people. I think my tape's just come off here. As a legitimate distraction. They're still picking up? Thank you. But how many of you know 
that when this becomes, this isn't an added on thing, this becomes part of who you are. It becomes part of the fabric of who you are. And once that's in you, then you're in that place where a father said, that's my, that's my man, that's my woman, that's my child. And you put yourself, I, uh, I think, uh, I won't quote who it was, but I just see that thing as putting yourself in the way of blessing. I just want to get in the way of that train called blessing. <laughs> well, what do you think about it, Val? Right? Another good one, different voice. I don't know how, how that happens. I mean, don't know. I gotta tape this back on here. I just feel so, so undone. I don't think it's gonna work. Anyways, okay, so, so okay, so uh, get so, so there's something about that putting yourself in the way of blessing. That's why when there's a healing service, we show up. Why? I wanna get some. I'm not here to watch everybody else get theirs. It's amazing. I love it when you do, but you don't want to really like it when I do. Right? What do they call that? Being under the spout where the glory comes out? What's happening? Is it gone again? My tape? We're not videoing this thing, are we? Is it good? Huh? This, no, this other tape, no, that'll just go over my... That'll go over my mouth. We don't want that, do we? <laughs> oh, I've got to move along. But they made light of it, and they were on their way, one to his farm, another to his business. And, and the rest seized servants, treated them spitefully, uh, and even killed them. That's when you know you're having a bad day, right? Oh, wow, not so good. And when the king heard about it, it says in here, he was furious. I think we can grieve the Lord. We can do things, and we know better, guys and gals, that we can grieve the Lord where he just thinks, oh, kids, after all I've done for you, the price that was paid for you, and that's not to guilt you, it's just saying understand the treasure that we have. You've already got it, and it's really easy not to place much worth on it because I've already got it. What a mistake that is. Next, the king says, well, I've had it with these folks. I'm going to send out my armies. And who did he invite? People that were on the street. I just think of the down and outer people, people that weren't on the royal list, people like me, maybe people like you, and that are invited to come to that feast, to feast with the king, to be part of this intimate setting, this wedding. And that's you. It's got nothing to do with how naughty you've been, where I've missed it. Maybe I've been away a Sunday or two. I'm still working on this whole tithing thing. That's all part of it. But his relationship on you is not dependent on any of those things. Isn't that cool? I think all he's waiting to hear is, yes, Lord. Wreck me. Take me. I'm here. And that's for you. That's for our Spanish church. That's for our Polish church. That's for our Windward church. That's for those people in Azusa standing out in the rain for I don't know how many hours. Yes. So go out in the highways, find as many as you can, invite them to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all they found, both bad and good. You know what that says to me? It says, even I have a shot at this thing. <laughs> As dangerous as my toy box is, maybe even your toy box, we are all equal at the cross. We like to think maybe in terms of superstars, but you know what? At the cross, we're all the same. Does that make sense? We are all the same. We've all got problems. We're all the same. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
It's, I got this note. This is, this is pretty hard hitting. We're ready for it, we're all adults. We either openly reject or secretly disobey. Ouch. Now I know that's nobody here. But Father, hey, how much of, how much of you does Father want? All. Oh, right from down to that hair that won't go in place to your ingrown toenails. And everything in between. And how does he see you as? Beautiful. He sees you as beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my, I've got to move along. We're having so much fun. But did any of this make sense? Does it make sense? Right? Hmm. Wow. And so here we are. We're just going to jump ahead a little bit here. Here we are in the upper room. Second chapter of Acts. We're all familiar with that. With these, I think it was 120, they said, in that place. And these are people like you and me who said we will not be denied. I just know Father's coming by. I just know he's going to unload something. I just know that he's got more than enough for me. I just know that he's going to make up the shortfall. I just know he's going to make up the check. I just know that he loves me. That's why he's coming by. He's coming by. And when we have worship this morning, you guys, you, does that drawing, does that, Eric, you put up that thing? If there's any lightning in the air, where's it going to go? Right to there. Hang on to the wire. I believe we can draw heaven down. Oh, do I have new tape? Do you want to tape me up? Blah, 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 please. My beautiful assistant. It's here, appendix. It's, oh, okay. So I just heard it's Aaron's appendix that needs a, some medical help. So Father, we just come against the inflammation, the blockage in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father God. And Father, either you heal, heal it divinely or you heal it medically, Father God. We come against any complications. We come against fear in Jesus' name, pain in Jesus' name. And Father God, that you be through this thing in Jesus' name. You've got her covered. Father, I know that they are believers, Father, and they press in. So they know you. They know your voice. And so, Father God, I just, we just cover them now as a congregation. We just release that Holy Spirit over them even now in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Thank you. It's interesting. This, I'm in Acts, uh, second chapter, first, uh, first few words. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, I just, sometimes I just think that when waiting on God, He will show when He will show. I think there's some things that I can do to affect that. Okay, so maybe I need to put that little spigot up a little bit higher. I need to make sure that this wire, that's me, is clean and pure so it can flow through whatever has to flow through so that I can carry what it is that he has for me. You know, one of the things that, you know, when you, when you begin to carry the, the Holy Spirit, the things that have, and we've seen it, where people don't have the character to carry what Father has given them. So, Father, help me be of good character so I can carry everything you've got. And the cool thing is only to give it away. That's what we do, right? So here they are in the upper room. And they're waiting. Did you know? I bet you there's even some people in this room who have prayed for something they've had to pray for more than a day. <laughs> I know! Maybe they've had to pray for more than a week. Maybe more than a month. Maybe you've had to pray for more than a year. Is that anybody here that you've had to pray for something? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. The rest of you, God bless you. Sixteen, seven. Uh, don't mess. <laughs> you, know, you ask a simple question to some people. 
I won't mention names at all, but you're just, you're, you're killing me here. <laughs> no, we're having fun. But I mean, the, but, but do not be discouraged. And it's not a, I think sometimes when we're praying and we're in alignment with Father, it's not a question of if he will answer my prayer. It becomes a question of when, right? And then it becomes like, so what do I do in the when part of it? I stay close, I do those things I know to do, knowing full well that my answer is on the way. That's the confidence, that's the faith that we carry, that you have access to. And that's why when we pray for somebody and I don't see the healing right away, I think that's in alignment with, the, with what the word is. We're all good, we're, we're as pure as we know how to be. Father's, father's definitely in the healing business. So it becomes a question of, okay, your, your back may not be total today, but let's look for tomorrow. I think sometimes too, because we don't look, we miss him. Right? Give us eyes to see. That becomes the prayer. That becomes the prayer. They were all in one accord. First of all, I thought they were in our car. We have one of those, in accord. <laughs> but I thought, no, that can't be because this came out before they made those kind of cars that I have. Accord, that's an interesting word. It's a really neat word, actually. Accord. Here's some synonyms. They're all in one accord. All the people in that room were in one accord. They agreed with one another. There is power in agreement. The destruction in division, right? So they were all of one accord, just like us guys. They're all of one accord. You guys are all of one accord. We concur with. Well, what is it we're praying for? We're, we're believing for. I agree with that. We're consistent with. We harmonize with. We're compatible with. We chime in with. We tune in. We correlate. We dovetail. Those that have got a few years on us, you know what a dovetail joint looks like? Beautiful piece of, you just hit in woodworking, right? Yes. And so, so, so that's, that's to help draw down the Spirit of God. They were all in one accord, in one place. And, and that's when you think, oh, so that's what that means, don't forsake the gathering together. Now, some people believe, I go to a coffee shop and I think about God, I've had church. You maybe had fellowship, I'll go that far with you. But there's something that happens in church that doesn't happen at St. Arbuck's. Wonderful place, by the way. I've heard. Right? But there's something here. There's a multiplying factor. Did you know that? There's a multiplying factor? And, and, and the way it works is in God's, in God's economy, it, it's exponential. I hardly even know what that means. I just know it's really, really good. I know addition, I know multiplication, but exponential, what happens there? And there's a multiplying. That's when you add two and two and it comes out seven. That's exponential. And, and, and it's talked about and, and makes no sense in the natural. If one can send a thousand to flight, with me? Two can send 10,000. Now how does that work? If one can send a thousand, you would think, okay, so another one would send one, one, two thousand. That's not what it says. There's a multiplying effect. There's something that happens in the heavenlies. There's something that's released when we come together and we're in one accord, we're of like mind. There's something that happens. And so when we come together and we're taken through worship, God bless them. There's, and, we're all, and I just love the music. When we're all together, there's something that happens. And we pull down heaven. And it's never a question of, well, what can I have? Wrong question. The question becomes, what do you want? What do you want? Right? Maybe for you it's a healing. It's not, it's not polite to point. 
I'm going to come up with better tape next time. If I ever get asked back. But we can walk in that Holy Spirit power. How much do you want? How much do you want? These people here, they refused to go home. It was raining. And they stayed. 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 15 hours. Pardon me, 15 hours. And they refused to be denied. You know what? You ever kind of get a little bit of grit and say, you know what? I refuse to be denied. And I press in. There's another word for that uh, kind of prayer. Um, intercession. You see, intercession, depending on what it is, it can be, ooh, it looks ugly. But these are people that refuse to be denied. I'm not letting go until I get what I've come for. And that's what's been paid for for you and for me. If I do this, it's going to work a whole bunch better. That's what Father has for you and for me. Did it go up my nose? Oh, thanks, Dean. I guess it did. Can we switch over? Thank you, thank you. But I don't want anybody here to be denied. I don't want anybody here to settle for. How sad is that? What's happening? I don't know how, why that happens to me. <laughs> I'm a good man. Father, why they're laughing, Father God, you just bless them. <laughs> That's right. What they say? Whose fool are you? I'm a fool for Christ. And so that's what I, I want the very best. I just think about our church and I could weep. I just think, wow, we are on the verge of something terrific. We have got so many people down in the Azusa. Oh, wow. They went down to that blessing. And they are packing. They are full. They are armed. They are dangerous. They are contagious. They're going to be back next week. You want to be here next week and catch somebody and bring them. Just grab them by the ear. The rest will follow. Right? <laughs> Where are we going? You don't need to know. It's a good place, though. And I wouldn't be at all surprised, is it going to be impartation? I don't know, fire tunnel? I don't know. But I'm coming next week to get mine. And I want you to get yours. And so the question is I have this morning, <laughs> I love saying it because it's often not true, and in closing, how much do you want? You think about your own life, and they think, oh God, me and t we're tight. Or maybe, you know what, there's just a little bit room for something else. The thing that I'm grappling with, I don't have breakthrough. I can't do this by myself. I can't do it by myself. I've tried, God knows I've tried. And I sometimes think that when, I'll speak for me, when I run out, that's when Father shines. And he takes you to that next level. He takes you to that holy place. He takes you to that place of revelation. He takes you to that place where you are really, really loved. When you run out of yourself. Is that true or is that true? And so I would just encourage you this morning. And I pray that something clicked this morning for you. Sorry about the tape on my face. I'll get better tape next week. But that's what I want for you. And as much as I want it, how much does Father want it for you? When Jesus went to the cross, he paid for it all. Not half a meal. He paid for it all. And I know the situations, people are dealing with stuff, sicknesses, maybe cancers in this room, maybe tumors in this room, maybe financial whatever in this room. I don't know what it is. But you know what? There are no surprises that come across Father's desk. Yes.
feel like I'm staring at the sun, but I feel